Hi, I'm Chris with T&K Off-Road and Overland, and today we're going to be adding these two-pin Deutsch connectors to this set of IJDM toy SR Mini lights. Uh, they come stripped and tinned, but with no connector. The harness I'm going to be using is the rigid uh, SR Mini backup light harness, which comes with two-pin Deutsch connectors on it. It comes with the five-pin relay, power and ground hookups. Um, and then this white wire here is actually going to tap in with more than likely a scotch lock uh, to some sort of either the reverse light or to the reverse light switch on your transmission. Uh, and it comes with this handy dandy six pin three way switch with an on, off, and auto. In the auto setting, when the white wire here gets power for your backup lights, it will actually turn these lights on and become backup lights. This harness runs about $50. These lights are about $45. The connectors, I think, were $10 to $15 a piece. Uh, so basically, we're getting a whole uh, rigid SR Mini setup for less than the cost of the SR Mini or the SRM lights from Rigid. Uh, these lights have been tested already. They've got a pretty bright uh, light coming out of them. Uh, they pattern pretty well. They should work great for chase lights and or reverse lights. The only thing about the IJDMs that I do not like is they do not make covered or colored covers for the light. So you just get the white. Um, whereas the Rigid brand actually has their own covers. I bought a Rigid cover. Uh, this is slightly too large to fit the Rigid. Uh, so I guess we're just going to be running white backup lights and chase lights. So we have our Deutsch connector 2 pin uh, for 14 to 16 gauge wire here. This is a full kit um, in case you have no connectors on your harness. Uh, the rigid comes with the other, the male side already done. So you're going to locate your male side here, your wedge lock for the male side, and then your pins for the male side, which ironically are female pins. What you should be left with are the male pins the female connector, and the green wedge. So what we're going to do, set our wedge and connector down over there. We're going to break off the metal part of the connector. You can use dikes if you want. Now we should have two free and ready to go male pins. I'm going to take your light. I have already trimmed down the stub harnesses here. They make a crimping tool specifically for each style of connector. I do not have it. I'm just using a pair of wire strippers with a pair of uh, grips on the end of it. These are blue point. I'm just going to go in there and kind of mash that down. Now you've got a nice tight crimp there. It's got no wiggle in it. Um, then this part here on the back would be to hold a seal for like a weather pack style connector like GM uses Delco connectors or Mercedes-Benz style German connectors. Um, this style you'll see that the seal is actually part of the connector housing so you don't need to crimp a seal onto it. So we'll do that with the black side as well. Again just kind of grab that little tang there, fold it over, give it a nice little push down. Um, with this style of connector, it's not super, super imperative that these be nice and round. Uh, some other style connectors do require that the crimped area be perfectly round to fit in the connector housing. Uh, the inside of these Deutsch connectors are very large and roomy. Uh, and you'll see here that you've got this nice ridge. It's square on both sides. So what we're going to do next, we're going to take a little WD-40. Uh, this is a water displacement agent. I mean, everyone knows WD-40, but it's good to reuse on electrical connectors. It will actually lubricate the seal so it's easier to get them on and apart. Uh, it will also make sure that seal connects really well. So we'll just lubricate a little bit there. We're going to take our female connector here. And I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to make sure that these connectors are wired the same. They both are. The red is on the would be my left side looking at it this way. So we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that our connectors kind of do the same. So I just kind of plug them in together here and then I will take my red wire, line it up with the red wire and you're just gonna push it back through the back and you're gonna listen for a click. And there's the click. 
Sometimes it's a little bit more pronounced than others, but listen for it again. Okay, so now that's on. It's also sealed on the backside around the wires. You're going to take this green wedge lock and a pair of needle nose pliers. You'll look down inside there and you can see there's an opening similar shape to this. Um, you're going to want this tang end here to go on the bottom because way back in there to release this if you have to take it apart is two little tangs. You'll pull this out and you'll use a pocket screwdriver or a thin pick to push those while pulling on the wire out the back. Uh, so you're going to take this wedge lock here and you're going to insert it. Once you get it in the hole something like that you can use a screwdriver or you can continue to use these needle nose pliers and just push it into place. Now it's nice and flush. These will not go anywhere. Now we just take it our SR mini harness that snaps together. That is a waterproof connector. This will sit outside the vehicle. Uh, no need to worry about any sort of water intrusion with this connector. Um, so here you can see a little bit of where I've routed the harness. I ran it along the top or inside of the frame rail along the factory harness. Uh, and then we've branched off around here. And we've gone right up in there, uh, spiraled up all the extra wires, zip tied it up to the exhaust hanger, put it above the heat shield. Uh, is in no way can get cut or chafed or dropped down. Uh, it will not get melted as I do not have a muffler there. It runs all along the bottom of this frame rail here. As you can see on the outside of the factory harness, on the past the cat, up and around the back side of this strut tower, right up <coughs> into the hole in the factory fuse box or fender well. Uh, here we'll be able to attach our red and black to power and ground. And then we will take red, black, and yellow. No, I don't have the red one. Red, black, and blue and run that through the firewall here along with the white wire up behind the dash up to the switch. Uh, the white wire will be then tapped into the reverse lights, uh, the, the reverse lamp switch. That way we can put the switch in auto, and when we put it in reverse, our lights come on. Alright, so now we get to the wiring of the switch. Uh, Rigid is good enough to give us a pretty decent wiring diagram about how this switch works and everything lays out. Uh, so what we've done, what I've noticed also, uh, and had to fix, got the switch all wired up. But Rigid didn't give us enough length to run this into the dash and leave the relay in the engine compartment. So I've cut off the ends here and I've added lengths of wire uh, with the white wire that they provided that is very long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to wrap this harness in this black cloth electrical tape just to make it look nice. Then we'll get it installed, uh, drill a hole in the A-pillar next to my other switch run the harness, pull it through the firewall, and everything is going to be good. All right, so now we're in the cab of the Jeep. We're about to run this wiring harness for the switch, wherever that is. Yeah. First, we need to start by taking off these two Torx bolts for the mirrors so we can pull down this panel here. Um, once that's done, we'll have access to remove this panel and then this panel. Now these screws are a T20, uh, just for reference. You have a brace in there. Make sure you do not lose that or the screws. You do need your visors. So once that's done, just kind of pull that down. And then you'll have a barb clip in here. It's uh, one of those Phillips screw things. And it can go fuck itself. Alright, now that you get that clip out, you'll see that it is still, in fact, the devil. I actually have a loose bolt right here, which I will need to take care of. Um, but, once that's out, you just kind of snap that out of the way like that. So, with where that's sitting, I'm going to either want to put a hole here or here. I'm not sure exactly where. 
Uh, my money is going to be up above or below. I think I'm going to go below. All right, now you can see that right there we have it installed after drilling a 13 16 hole into this trim panel. Uh, now we're going to uh, install the wires back onto the back side of the switch, reinstall the panel and all of the glory, uh, and then we will hook it up to the battery and hopefully everything will be great. Now all said and done with the lights, we ended up having to move them up here onto the bumper because they would stick out too far in these holes. They would have become some sort of liability off-road. So we have one mounted there and one mounted here. They aren't symmetrical, but they'll work. All right. <clears throat> now we've run our white wire along the same harness that we routed for the lights themselves. We've got back here, we have our tail light off. I have Firebug LED tail light, so I have this harness adapter here. Uh, so I've gotten the three or four actually wires here. Your black is obviously your ground. Uh, then it was down between what these three do. Uh, couldn't really find that all that much on the internet. So what I did was I took a multimeter and I took the black lead and I stuck it into the back here of the black one down past the seal put the Jeep in reverse and I put the key to ignition position two, uh, which would be the run, not start position. Lights came on. I stuck the multimeter lead down into this one. It was the first one we got and it turned on. I had no other lights on in the Jeep. So therefore on the 2008, the black or the white with a gray stripe is going to be your reverse lights. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure we have more than enough wire here, which we do trim the wire. We've got ourselves this scotch lock right here. We're going to stick the wire we want to tap in into the right side uh, or the side closest to the little folding door. There's a plug at the end of it. It cannot go through. It bottoms out. Uh, you also want to snap this over the line you want to tap into, into the first position. So with that snapped in, we will stick this into place and we get those where we want and we're gonna push down on the silver piece in the center that actually ties the two together. Uh, once that's in and we have no movement there, we fold the lock over and now that is tapped in. Before we put this together, we're going to hook up that onto the battery and we're going to check to make sure they work. That is our reverse position right there. Everything looks gold. Make sure they don't come on when the reverse lights are not on and everything is good. Now the last thing we'll do is put the tail light back together here. Uh, if you don't know how to take that out or put it back together, see our video on installing the Firebug tail lights. That'll have every info you need to know. Uh, thanks for checking us out. Hope to see you on the trails.